It's not known exactly when us humans began to imagine being able to live forever, but it's probably been thought about for thousands of years, since getting old comes from a whole list of problems associated with it. The ancient Greek poet Homer called old age loathsome, and the well-known Shakespeare termed old age as a hideous winter. There are many scientists and researchers who believe that soon discoveries will be made that lead to immortality, and that maybe even stem cell research could reverse the effects of aging, since it has great potential. Believe it or not, it's not known exactly why we age. It just happens, and it's part of life. Researchers are still trying to understand what actually causes us to grow old and wither away, and have looked at aging as if it were a disease. But is it possible to achieve immortality? There are many scientists who say that it's just a matter of time. In fact, the tech giant Google says that we will probably find out the secret to eternal life by the year 2029. This is the time when it is estimated that nanobots will be created that will be able to swim through our bodies and fight disease. Even more unbelievable is that Ray Kurzweil, who is Google's director of engineering, says that medical advancements and technology will advance so much in the next 10 years that we may see human beings given the option to live forever. It's a pretty bold statement unless you understand the concept of medical nanobots. The microscopic bots could one day be used as drug capsules that directly target the disease and deliver the cure without affecting the entire body. Some scientists claim that eventually, we will be able to inject tiny nanoscale machines into our bodies that act like tiny pharmaceutical labs. These tiny robots would be able to detect a problem inside of your body, process your body's natural enzymes and proteins into a drug, then deliver it to a problem spot. Imagine never being sick again. Nanotechnology is already capable of some incredible things. At the same time, there are some scientists that say it's impossible to biologically live forever because our bodies would age no matter what. Research suggests that by solving one problem, the human body ends up with another. There is a normal cell cycle in our body, and if good cells are boosted, then cancer cells have a better chance to grow, and even more violently. Well, even if they are, there are other ways to become immortal. Cryonics is something that has been around for decades and is the science of freezing the body of a person using ultra-cold temperatures, stopping decay and putting everything on hold. No, it's not science fiction, and shouldn't be confused with cryosleep you see in the movies. With cryonics, the idea is to bring the person back from a deep freeze when the medical technology becomes available. As we mentioned before, some believe medical science will advance so much in the next decade or so that people who are cryogenically frozen could be brought back to life and have their health problems cured. At this point, they could live forever. Until then, the person stays frozen inside of a deep freeze chamber. Imagine being in one of these chambers for 100, or maybe even 1,000 years, and then being brought back to life in an unknown future, where anything could be possible. Of course, the procedure of preservation is experimental, and no one knows if it will be possible to bring someone who has been frozen back to life. But, if you are interested, there is a company that was founded in 1972 called Alcor, where you can become a client of this company, and when something happens to you, the company immediately steps in as soon as possible to preserve your body and your brain. Apparently, it's really easy to become a member, and if you are in good health and have life insurance, it will pay for your cryopreservation. With things being that easy, maybe many of us will end up frozen and waiting until it's possible to become immortal. Interestingly enough, there was a book published in 1986 called Engines of Creation, which focuses on nanotechnology. In this book, the author predicted that by 2040 to 2050, that the first humans will be cryonically brought back to life. But stem cell researchers think that it could be a lot sooner than that. The breakthroughs in the field have been incredibly astounding, and stem cells can be used to cure almost anything, grow new organs, and even cure baldness. Despite being in the infancy of stem cell research, the results from this alone have been shocking. As far as how many people are actually cryonically frozen, but at the Cryonics Institute in Michigan, there are nearly 2,000 people signed up to be frozen immediately after they pass away. And as of January 2018, there were 160 patients already frozen in tanks of liquid nitrogen. And for the record, for those who are curious, the first human ever frozen by cryonics was Dr. James Bedford, who passed away in 1967 and is still in his cryonic chamber after 50 years. The big question one needs to ask themselves is, 
Do I really want to live forever? Imagine the things that would be able to be accomplished if you could live as long as you wanted to. Of course, there is that whole afterlife thing that a lot of people believe in. What if there is some existence when we leave our bodies and we don't want to come back? Some of you may think that it will be impossible to bring a frozen person back to life. However, some cool technology has come from the science of cryogenics. Some doctors have come up with a procedure which removes all the blood from a wounded person's body and replaces it with a really cold saline solution, which drops the body's temperature to around 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Right now, you're probably saying that's impossible to remove all the blood from a human body and survive. However, this procedure called Emergency Preservation and Resuscitation, or EPR, cools the body down to the point our cellular activity stops and cells can survive without oxygen. In a state of hypothermia, the human body's need for oxygen dramatically decreases. First, the solution is quickly pumped through the large aorta, through the heart and towards the brain first. Then the solution is pumped into the rest of the body. This puts the body in a state of suspended animation and can give doctors a couple of hours to save a person who has fatal wounds. Once the damage is repaired, the saline solution is replaced with the patient's blood, where the heart should start on its own. And if it does not, then the doctors will resuscitate the patient with a heart-lung bypass machine. Sounds scary, and apparently no humans have undergone the procedure, even though some testing was recently cleared. We will surely hear more of this in the future. But what about our consciousness? First of all, no one has suitable definition for what consciousness is, even though there have been many things written about it. But there are some who believe that we will soon be able to transport our consciousness to a computer, and even a prediction that we will create a perfect robot body that would be a beautiful and elegant super powerful body without a brain. The idea is to then extract our brain tissue, neuron for neuron, and duplicate it with transistors, and there would be one of these transistors for every neuron we take out of our brain. Basically, it would be uploading our brain, our memories, and our consciousness to a machine. Imagine going through this procedure and being fully conscious as this was happening, with part of our brain working in our body and another part working in a robot. Of course, you would be connected by wires until the process was completed, and soon you would have a human body with no brain and the perfect silicon and steel robot would be complete. This is just one of the more ambitious ideas of moving human consciousness into a machine. One of the others is uploading our consciousness into a computer. There are people now who are trying to unlock the secrets of the brain and then make it possible to upload that person's mind into a computer, which would free them of their biological body. All of the evidence, in theory, says that this is possible, although it's extremely difficult at the present time. That's because we simply don't have the technology to map the whole human brain. Of course, there are others who say that the human brain cannot be replicated because you cannot code all of the emotional things that makes us human. The interesting thing about this whole process is that if it were possible to digitize human consciousness, you would be able to move between bodies, both real and synthetic. Imagine being able to be transferred to any machine or body that you want. That is assuming no one else is there or has already left. Millions of dollars have been spent on the technological ideas that promise that one day our brains will be turned digital. It is an absolutely fascinating thing that all of us will eventually experience what happens after we leave this earth. Maybe there is some kind of glorious afterlife where only our spirit can live, or even perhaps scarier, maybe when we pass away, it's as if we simply flipped off the light switch. There are a lot of questions when it comes down to being immortal. If you could suddenly live forever, have your brain moved into a robot, or upload your consciousness into a computer, would you do this? What about your family and your friends? What if they weren't coming along? We hope you enjoyed this video. Let us know in the comments if you would want to be immortal, why, and what you would do. If you liked the video, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications, and you'll be the first to know when a new video comes out. We appreciate you, and thank you for watching.